It is Tuesday the 11th of May. So maybe I'm going to upload this video tomorrow because I've got a video that I have finished working on last night and was going to upload it tomorrow but then now I'm going to have to upload it today. That way I can upload this one tomorrow. It will be the 12th, isn't it, of May. Here in Australia, Canberra. Now, okay, enough with the chit chat. It's been raining for the past week. Okay, I'm gonna have to put my foot. I've got an umbrella. I can't use a raincoat because the camera's gonna get wet. So I have to use an umbrella and the umbrella's gonna hit a lot of the things around me. But anyway, I've been meaning to pot this up. This is my Echeveria Mexican Giant. Look how beautiful and compact they are. I have grown them small and compact. I don't think they're a pure Mexican giant. They might have already been hybridized. And these are grown from cuttings of my Mexican giant. Anyway, they are so beautiful. Okay, just to show you. They are small. This the biggest one here. Look, it's having a baby already. This is small. So I was looking online and I saw someone uh, selling sort of similar looking plants with a different name. It's already a hybrid, something like that. So it made me think, can a Mexican giant cuttings mutate like this? And then this one, this beautiful red plant here, I got that with no name. And I've been trying to put a name on it. I don't know what to call this, but it's just red. But I think it might actually be a simit. A simit, they say, is the same as the Christmas. Can I call you a simit? Because you, in the center, it's like really green. And all year round, this plant is like this. During the summer, where I'm growing it up the top, on top of my 50% shade cloth area, right up the top. So it still gets like sort of, well, I would say 50% of sunlight. They sort of dull a little bit, but most of the time, so for nine months of the year, or even ten months of the year, it's really bright and colorful. So that color stays like that. So it's different from my Reuben, which is over here. So again, this poor Reuben, I've only ever watered it once again. Uh, this year now, 2021, because we've been getting a lot of rain, so it doesn't need watering. So this video, I'm going to address the issue of how often do you water your plants. In summer, I hardly water, put it that way. During summertime, I only water when the plant needs it. So if I see some leaves going soft, then I will water. Otherwise, I don't water at all. The whole year, like with this rain, I don't water. So your soil mix is very, very important in small pots so i keep plants in small pots because basically in ceramic pots specifically okay so that's a cement pot i don't recommend using cement pots i hate cement pots i find that the plant suffers and it's not only one plant there's a few plants now i've tested or experimented that's showing signs of stress from the lime I suppose that's in the cement so I don't think they like the lime too much so I have to repot them or change the pots but the ceramic ones can basically look after themselves so these ceramic pots or the plants that are in ceramic pots I'll look at that Mexican giant there as well look at that not gorgeous that one there it's just gonna stay small like that and compact and unlike the counterpart basically okay I'm getting off um, topic again so in ceramic pots they basically don't need watering that much the heat and the cold meeting together forms condensation and the plants internally they get watered unless you see the plants showing signs of dryness or needing water then that's the only time i take the whole pot and soak it so, so for example this Lilacina. Oh my god, that is so beautiful. So that's a Lilacina. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And a lot of these plants are my... Uh, okay, that one is a really beautiful Frank Reynolds. That's actually the smallest Frank Reynolds and it's sort of different looking as well. 
compared to my mother, Frank Reynolds, where that came from. And I've got cactus, that one, I just reported that after uh, testing for three years, being living out here a couple of years maybe. Uh, then I finally reported it and I've accepted the fact that it can, it can survive the frost that we have here. All my Hawothis are getting drenched out here and I don't see anything rotting. If not, the ones that rots are the ones that's out in or in covered. So they seem to be less air circulation they get, the more they rot. And look at that Santa Gold, the Hawothia Santa Gold. I am quite happy with my Hawothia collection. The only thing I would have to add is maybe that empty spot there. I, I've been lusting after an emperor, <laughs> a Hawarthia emperor, by the way. So I need one to go in there. So the variegated ones that I purchased recently, so that was in March when I bought these ones, they're growing. They are growing. So those three, those one, two, three. But anyway, so most of my plants really look after themselves. I, I maltreat my Romeo. This is the most maltreated one. It has seen so many, a few winters already, this arrangement here, this pot here. And even that PVN, that Pearl von Nonberg there, that got uh, sprayed on, well, attacked by millibug, and I sprayed it with white oil. Because this is the stage we're in. I don't know anything about succulents, so I'm just trying everything out. And that actually nearly died, but I left it. And it grew back again, and it grew with, it used to have eight heads, I think. Now it's just six. So slowly it's dying. I probably time to chop, chop them. And <laughs> uh, what do you call this? And take some cuttings and renew this pot. But I won't be able to do that until uh, later on next, when I come back from my trip anyway. So it's going to be a few months. But this one, oh my goodness, this, this. I just have to show you this one, my Paul Bunyan. This is now four years old. This Paul Bunyan here coming on to... This is one of the oldest ones that I bought, the Paul Bunyan. One of the first few ones. And the carunculation is just amazing. See, look. Look at the... Oh, it's gorgeous. This is actually the mother, apparently, according to Dick Wright. <laughs> I was watching a video saying this is the original strain of the carunculatas or the... Uh, bumpy echeverias. So they hybridize the Paul Bunyan 20, 50, 100 times over to create all these other cultivars. Red sail, echeveria red sail. This is quite big. This is quite a big plant. Look at that. That is large plant. So hang on. my I'm getting wet again in the back. So three of them. Last year, I have to report it. After a couple of years, the soil lost its essence. So this is to say, do succulents need fertilizer? Yes, they do. So I fertilized it. I actually didn't fertilize it for the first two years. And on the third year, which was last year, it started showing signs of dying on me. And that was in autumn. And so I pulled the whole thing out and reported it and put it in the big pot here. Put it in my master succulent soil mix. And I gave it lots of fertilizer and lots of my seaweed conditioner and it bounced back now So you need to fertilize them, but once a year don't give them too much fertilizer as well or else they're gonna Look big and ugly. Well, unless you like big not ugly, but green When I say ugly it's like green. I like them red. So if you want your plants green or your succulents green then give them lots of nitrogen specifically that makes them give them the green ones now this flapjack here this Kalankowi flapjack here I am obsessed with this flapjack but I can't grow them here in Canberra because the frost they will suffer the frost so this one last year I kept it here and it survived the frost it was actually a mild winter minus seven is the most of the coldest we got so I still have to leave this flapjack here I think this is a frisifolia and the Lucier is hidden somewhere so this trisifolia is apparently much hardier than the Lucier. So this one now, I really want to plant them in my garden at the front, but 
if they can't handle the frost, then I had my first uh, Lucier died on me, quite a big plant, and I paid good money for it on my first year of growing succulents, and it died on me. And so uh, I've learned my lesson. So this one now, look how many babies it's got, but then that sort of became less last uh, couple of years ago when it got hit by the frost and then came back again. So even last year it suffered a little bit, a couple of dead leaves, but then now it came back again. But anyway, uh, they can handle the sun. They grow really beautiful and red during summer, but in winter it's no good. And this one is Echeveria Lady Grey. Okay, this one variegated but it's doing all this funky it's actually looking like Jocelyn's joy see look it's beautiful it looks like a Jocelyn's joy so anyway it just needs to have a bit more flicky on the tip of the leaves stay away from cement pots look all my plants here that's in the cement pot though they might look pretty they are suffering I can see I can feel them I don't know I can see that they're suffering I was like, take me out of here. And look at that one. Like, it's pretty, but anyway, I need to remove them from the cement pot. Or at least seal your cement pot. But then again, yeah, seal them. Okay, I think that's the best. And then this, I've been meaning to transplant it, but I just could not find the time and the weather to cooperate with each other. I call this plant a Marilyn. And this is one interesting plant. When it's being... In the summer, put it out in the sun, it will bleach. Put it in the shade, it, it's all pink. But now in autumn, as, as it gets cold, they become pale again. So I didn't really have a name for that one. So I don't know what sort of, maybe it's a Lola tissue culture. Because when uh, tissue culture it, then it can throw off different looks. Now, my Graptivaria, something bashful <laughs> there's so many plants up i can't remember all the names i swear to you i can't remember all the names i do forget so this bashful here next to it so that's one plant i started with one plant now and i kept thinking it's probably three years it's only like two and a half years ago i couldn't believe it but anyway this next plant to it that louisia something i think this one it just grew on it and it's also a succulent so I need to transplant that, take that out of there because it is. it looks so pretty, but I'm sure that one is the flowering one. Cotyledon. I've been meaning to do a cotyledon or cotyledon, as I prefer to say it. Cotyledon or cot cotyledon or cotyledon. It's up to you how you say it, but I like to say cotyledon. This cotyledon here is so beautiful, two types, and I've been meaning to do a video of them, but just couldn't find it. But they are very hardy plants. If you can get hold of a cotyledon or cotyledon or cotyledon, then get one. You won't regret it, especially these ones. They do like a lot of sun, so they, you need to expose them to the sun. And they don't not mind a bit of frost as well. So these two here has been growing here for the last couple of years, few years. Actually, since their life with me, they've been out here in the sun. So 2019, what year is it now? It is two years, isn't it? when I got given this. So when I got given this, I swear to you, it's only a tiny plant, like sort of smaller than that. One cutting and look at both of them now. Check out this Echeveria low. How low can you go? As low as this one, this is in the ground. I've been wanting to put a lot of the plants. They're all, all my pots, can you see? All those little square pots there and all along on this aisle look at that they're like firing squad they need to walk through that gate <laughs> and into the garden but i need to prep and clean up and it's just there's not enough time in a day or a week i do my gemstones as well i have to spend time with my gemstones but i haven't been doing a lot of the videos lately on my other channel list create i've been neglecting that I just couldn't get the inspiration because the weather and everything else was going on. But anyway, this is an Echeveria candy. Would you like some candy? Yum, yum candy. Look at that. Beautiful. And during summer, that's boring. But the minute the weather gets cold, it becomes beautiful. Look at that candy. You're my candy. So this is now three and a half years old. So from one candy 
Now I got many, many candies and I've already propagated a few candies from that one. So I just hope that I moved it now that doesn't fall off. Okay, it's, it's moving. You're going to drop here? Don't drop. Okay, please stay there. Need to push you. There you go. A bit stable. There you go. That's it. See the Mexican giant? That's my thumpy Mexican giant. And they do grow compact. So that's the long Mexican giant. There you go. So they're longer leaves. And I'm growing a lot of over there as well. They're sort of on the fence here. They're sort of longer. They're all the same, but yet look, some of them grow long and others grow short. So I think I'm going to keep the short ones and the long ones I'm going to put in the garden. So the short leaf ones, so like that one there, that's going to go into pretty pots. Oh, look at this. Supreme. Supreme. How beautiful are you? Okay, so many plants. Oh, bluebird. Look. Bluebird. Actually, this one in the shade. See, look at that. So that's big and blue. So I've been covering it, not exposing it to the sun. And it's, forgot to put that in my video. My bluebird. Uh, something something video. <laughs> so many videos. Ah, beautiful. 